after spending three years talking to people in the C-suite, um, CEOs, chief marketing officers, etc., we ask them, when you hire people, what are you looking for? And when you promote them, what are you looking for? And what they said was that, yes, we still need MBA people, and yes, we still need uh, engineers, but there's this third set of skills that are currently being undersupplied by the market by business schools, by engineering schools, and by communication schools. So we identified the major attributes of these skills, which have five elements, which we believe are somewhat unique to people with great communication skills. So underlying all of these elements are the ability to communicate effectively, which means both listening as well as speaking. Uh, what was great about having the conversation today with the uh, with our colleagues at the Harvard Business School with the Digital Initiative is to hear the, their feedback and their reaction to the search for these softer skills. Um, and I think the conclusion coming out of the discussion today is that engineers are looking for these same attributes, uh, the business school folks are looking for it, and on the communication side we have many of those skills already of what we call putting things in context but what we lack are the skills of the engineers and the skills of the MBA folks. So moving forward, we want to take these five attributes, uh, which are critical for third space thinking, and begin to enrich them by finding ways to include what is studied typically by engineers and typically by MBA as well. So we create um, not just one-third of what is necessary for the modern corporation to be successful and to create innovation, but a fuller, more balanced approach that has the hard skills as well as the soft skills. I think the starting point for those of us who are really interested and follow very closely um, issues of digital production, digital distribution, and concentrating on the technologies that make that possible is to take the uh, broader approach and recognize that each of these skills, in fact, is in deeply, deeply embedded in a social structure, an economic structure, a political structure. So the idea that there is a free-floating digital technology which automatically is going to have an impact either entirely good or entirely bad is naive. And so that as we think about the digital initiative and the digital future, what we're going to discover more and more is that the digital will become deeply embedded in the ongoing economic relations and political relations of, of the world. What we're hoping on the optimistic uh, side, perhaps somewhat naive, is that these new digital technologies and tools and resources will transform the poor into the middle class or the rich, the unemployed into the employed, et cetera, et cetera. But as we look at the digital initiatives, we also have to look at the political context in which they occur. Uh, I think the challenge for those of us who are educators, uh, who care about building the next generation, is to ensure that our students, that our younger colleagues, know that with the digital comes power comes influence, comes social and cultural dimensions. And those who will be most successful, I believe, including successful in changing the world for the better, will not rely upon the technology, digital or otherwise, to make those changes, but they will marry these powerful tools with a progressive social vision and political vision so that more people, in fact, can be brought in from the margins of society into the center of society and benefit from this digital transition.